time to burn. Yes, Monsieur Rochette. The forest ahead is a likely place for the purple mass to attempt to rescue our prisoner. You still think he'll try? But of course. Did I not spread enough rumors we are moving the Count to show back along this road in a hay wagon? See that our prisoner is secure. Just as we left him, our bait dangles in plain sight. Follow at a safe distance and keep your men alerted. Yes, monsieur. being foolish, monsieur. There. Are you strong enough to ride? Yes. Find food and money. Stay on the back roads till you reach the coast. Now, quickly, for a gold piece, any fisherman will get you across the channel to England. God bless you, monsieur, whoever you are. If ever I can show my gratitude. Someday soon, Count de Chauvin, when this reign of terror is over and a Frenchman is again safe on the soil of France. Monsieur O'Shea, Minister of Police. We have a long ride ahead. I swear to you, Counsel, it was as though the earth had swallowed them. Wagon, prisoner, and O'Shea. Must I become the laughing stock of the Republic and send an entire regiment to escort one royalist? Merely because of this purple mask? But we have no proof it was the purple mask, sir. This was found by one of the sentries. It is addressed to Napoleon Bonaparte. 
First Consul of France. I think we have the proof, Captain. Where was this found? There was an unoccupied hay wagon. The letter was attached to the horse's tail. The horse's tail. Except for a slight loss of dignity, the Minister of Police is safe in my hands. He can regain both his dignity and his release in the usual manner. 10,000 gold louis to be placed to my account in England. Surely the First Consul does not intend to pay this outrageous demand. I have no choice. All his faults, Rocher, is too valuable a man to lose. I'm completely surrounded by incompetence. You forced me to do something I did not wish. I shall go to the south of France and get Brisquet out of retirement. Brisquet? <laughs> Stop. You know dueling is forbidden. Careful, you'll get hurt. Briefcase! Briefcase! This humble village is honored, First Consul. You were practically banished from Paris, Briefcase, because of your continual dueling, and I see you've not learned your lesson. One should obey an edict of the First Consul, but sometimes it's difficult. Monsieur Bonaparte. I'm willing to overlook your infraction of the law since I have need of your services in Paris. The First Consul knows I've retired from public affairs. You're the only man who can track down the Purple Mask. I thought he was dead. The Royalists are continually spreading rumors of his death. I assure you he's very much alive. So? We've heard many reports of the Purple Mask. Even here in the South. It might be amusing. Then I may count on you. I'll be in Paris as soon as possible. <laughs> I must have a word with your niece. It is very important. You know my rules, Captain. However, for you, I break them. But only for a moment. Lorette has another change. Merci, monsieur. Excuse me. Lorette. I must have a word with you. I shouldn't speak to you after what happened the other night. I ask your forgiveness. It was unavoidable. I waited for you until after ten. There was an unforeseen complication. It wasn't that horrible purple mask again. He kidnapped Rocher. Oh, the minister of police? How terrible. Almost at the gates of Paris. But how could he when you told me Rocher's plan? It sounded so brilliant. Oh, I've never seen the First Consul so angry. But we shall see whether his own plan to capture the purple mask will be any more successful. Oh, oh poor dear. You've had so much trouble and I've acted so rudely. You, uh, you forgive me for the other night? Not unless you take me out to dinner tonight to make up for it. Tonight? I didn't dare hope. I'm late. Tonight, Charles, you should tell me all about everything. You made an appointment for tonight, Irene? No. Good. I want you to keep my dinner engagement with Colonel Brissett. Tell him I took sick. That dull old fool. That dull old fool is close to Napoleon. He knows much that can be of help to us. I will learn what I can. Constance, when you go dancing tonight with Lieutenant Armand, be discreet. He is very shrewd. And if he suspects you are trying to pry information, I understand. You'll have to hurry, girl. Bonsoir, mademoiselle, Captain. Charles, you still haven't told me how Napoleon hopes to bring it about. He is bringing Brisquet out of retirement. Brisquet? Brisquet will have one of our most important prisoners publicly executed. Hundreds of thick men will mingle in the crowd. 
how very clever. If the prisoner is important enough, the Purple Mask will surely try to rescue him. Precisely. And that is why Napoleon has chosen a prisoner who is most important to the royalists. Oh, I know so little of politics. How can he be important if he is already a prisoner? He is a figurehead who might one day become a rallying point for them. Oh, how exciting. Who is he? <laughs> I know. I'm not permitted to say. Oh, really, Charles? I can tell you this, my curious kitten. His death will cause quite a furor. He was one of the few aristocrats who was loved by the people, and that is why, instead of the guillotine, he was imprisoned at Rouen. What's wrong? Oh, it all sounds so exciting. Tell me more. A wonderful evening, Lord S. When may I hope for another? As soon as you return from your trip to Evreux. Good night, Charles. Good night. La Caserne. Gentlemen, you're not paying attention to the dance. I shall show it to you again. Thus and so and la di da di da di do. Thus you see and the la di da di da di di. Encore, encore. That was a, a jewel, Rene. They say it's the rage of the Spanish court. <laughs> Give us another demonstration. Huh? It's so fatiguing, but if you insist. Uh, one should really have a young lady in his arms. What's wrong with Amy? How clever of you it was! Milady. I've added a few variations of my own. Watch. Yes! Amazing. I ask for a young lady in my arms and I find one. If you please, monsieur. A thousand apologies. There was no harm done, monsieur. It was an accident. I said no harm done. I was demonstrating the latest dance step. Would you do me the honor? I did not come here for dancing, monsieur. Surely mademoiselle is not interested in fencing. I mean, I, I, I came to arrange for lessons. Then what better opportunity to begin? Music. of this interruption. Back to your fencing, gentlemen. You too, René. Oh, Monsieur Cardinal, you know how I detest fencing. Come, come now. Perhaps one day we can finish our dance. What can I do for you, mademoiselle? I wish to arrange for dancing lessons. At this hour of the evening? I work in the daytime. I see. Will you come inside, please? I've warned you, Lorette. Never to come here. It is very urgent. If ever they trace the purple mask here, I want an investigation to stop with me. Marcel, they are sending my father to the guillotine. Oh, 
why not even Napoleon would dare to execute the Duc de Latour. It is a trap to capture the Purple Mask. Napoleon has called in Brisquet. So, that's it. We must once more spread the rumor that the Purple Mask is dead. They would never believe it again. There must be some other way. Lorette. Suppose the Purple Mask were to be captured before then. You can't be serious. Not even to save my father. Not the real Purple Mask, but a fictitious one. Are you suggesting we get someone to impersonate him? Why not? If Napoleon believes the Purple Mask has been captured, he will alter his plans and your father will not be brought to Paris for execution. And what happens to his substitute? He will die, like any one of us if we are caught. I will not take part in deliberately sending a man to his death. It is not just a matter of your father's life, Lorette, but of the entire royalist cause. I still cannot do it. Lorette, suppose the fictitious purple mask merely performed a few diversionary abductions in several parts of France, anywhere but in the vicinity of Paris. He would still leave the real purple mask free to help your father if Napoleon brings him here from Rouen. Where could you find a man who would undertake so dangerous a task? I don't know. I can only hope there is such a man somewhere. I pray God you find him soon. Every moment is precious. I will send someone to you by tomorrow night. Be careful, dear. Marjolaine. I'm sorry, the shop is closed for the night. We sell nothing after hours. Not even white flags? Good evening. Good evening. What are you doing here? And good evening to you, sir wherever you are with your pistol. On my way here, I pass three poplars on my left and six oaks on my right. Three times six is 17. And seven makes 23. It may be a good code, but it's shocking arithmetic. You come from Marcel Cardinal? Yes, he got in touch with me early this morning. He gave me a letter, but first permit me. I am the Count René de Travier. And you, Monsieur Marjolin, are the Marquis de Clamorgan. And this is Mademoiselle Aurette de Latour. Ah, the daughter of our beloved Duke, Anna. You spoke of a letter. Did I? Oh, a letter, of course. Excuse me. Now, where did I? Oh, of course. How amusing. It's absorbed some of my eau de cologne. I have it especially prepared. Do you like it? Follow me. Something wrong? Monsieur Carignan speaks very highly of your courage and devotion to France. You sound amazed. What we have in mind requires more than graceful dancing. So you like my dancing? What a delightful compliment. I also do sleight of hand. I write poetry, recite prose. The mission you go on, if you go, may cost you your life. My life, mademoiselle, is completely at your disposal. You're not afraid of death? So mortally afraid, I would go to fantastic length just to stay alive. You may not be so flippant, monsieur, when you learn more of our plans. Please come with me. How 
clever. How unbelievably, incredibly clever. It's uh, rather dark. This is the gentleman Marcel sent to us, the Comte de Travier. Father Brochard. Father. Comtesse de Grisard. And Baron de Molay. Sit here, my son. Thank you. How much did Monsieur Cardinal tell you? I really don't recall. It was rather confusing. He did mention a gentleman known as the Purple Mask. Oh, yes, several times. From what I understand, he kidnaps individuals and then sells them back to interested parties. In a sense, yes. He does it to raise money. What an odd way of earning a living. He uses the money to finance the Royalist movement. Quite clever. For reasons I need not state, we need a fictitious purple mask for a few days. For reasons I cannot understand, Monsieur Cardinal recommends you for the role. Undoubtedly because of my experience on the stage. You are in the theater. Apparently, Monsieur Cardinal neglected to mention that I'm enrolled in a school in order to study dramatics. The assignment we have for you, monsieur, may cut short your career. No sacrifice is too great for one's art, mademoiselle. I hope I'll be permitted to wear my disguises. Disguises? Oh, yes, you know, wigs, false beards, that sort of thing. Your methods would be of your own choosing. Then that should be fun. In that case, I accept. Think well, my son. Should you be caught, you will pay exactly as the real purple mask would on the guillotine. Then, Father, I shall be careful not to be caught. Now, for my first assignment. Something spectacular, I hope, for my debut. Your first mission, Monsieur, will be to take prisoner the new governor of the Lower Seine, Pierre Orsonelli. Please, uh, a piece of paper. Thank you. For my notes. Orsonelli. Orsonelli. Lower Seine. What does he look like? Nobody knows. Description, none. <laughs> that should make it easy. Tomorrow morning, he leaves Paris to take up his appointment under the escort of a certain Captain Laverne. Laverne. He spends tomorrow night at the Chateau in Evreux. Chateau, tomorrow night, Evreux. Uh, Mademoiselle seems unusually well informed. I have a way of finding out things. A delightful way, I'm sure. Delightful. He will be very heavily guarded. Do you have any particular hour in mind? As to that, suit yourself. Then suppose we say at the stroke of midnight, for the sake of neatness. Tuesday, midnight. There, now that I have him, what do I do with him? Uh, on the west edge of town, there's a farmer called Jacques Dubois. Deliver him there. Jacques Dubois. Yes. And he may have his freedom on the payment of 10,000 gold louis. Now, where would a farmer get that kind of money? Not the farmer, Governor Orsinelli. Oh. 10,000 gold louis. The details we leave to you. Then permit me to take my leave. Time is short and I have much to do. I will see you to the door, monsieur. You're most kind. Father. Comtesse. Monsieur. Father. Monsieur. Mademoiselle. Au revoir. Cardinal must be mad to send us this fool. On the contrary, he's an excellent choice. He's thoroughly stupid. Would a man of intelligence agree to go on such an errand? But he's thoroughly incompetent, useless. Then the world loses little by his death. He's so young, so very foolishly young. I know, Father, but the future of France is so very important. And was that? Permit me. Uh, do you not wish me luck? Is it necessary, Monsieur? The whole affair is obviously such a trifle to you. You do not seem happy that I'm undertaking this mission. You stand an excellent chance of losing your head tomorrow. On the contrary, mademoiselle, I've already lost it this evening. Should any misfortune happen to you, monsieur, is there anyone I... I haven't a relation in the world, not since the revolution. Some lady, perhaps. No lady. Monsieur, should you change your mind, we will understand. You've accepted a most difficult mission. Even the real Purple Mask would stand little chance. And you think I stand none. The Purple Mask is an extraordinary man. I intend to equal his exploits, if not excel them. 
If you insist in underestimating your danger, so monsieur, do it. not underestimate you him. You admire the purple mask. With all my heart, even though I've never seen him. Don't you find him a trifle theatrical? I do not. All this flamboyance, this gaudy cape, this purple mask, this doesn't disturb you? All that disturbs me, monsieur, is your flippancy. Good night. And remember, we still have a dance to finish. A little fresh air might help me. At this hour? Yes. I won't be long. Oh, you dropped? Give me that letter. Why are you writing to the Bureau of Police? Never mind, give me the letter. Not until I know what you've written. It's not your concern, Lorette. Give me back the letter and forget what you've seen. Be advised that the Purple Mask intends to kidnap Governor Orson Elliott from the Chateau at Evreux on Tuesday. At the stroke of midnight, a friend. How could you do this? André, Monsieur Moulin. Perhaps you can explain to them your friendship with the police. No, Lorette. Perhaps they will explain it to you. What's the trouble? We have a traitor. Read this. My apologies, Comtesse. I'd hope to avoid this awkwardness. Are you going to tell her? I have no choice. The truth is, Lorette, that I wrote this letter. You couldn't have. I don't understand. Yes, I do. You want René de Trevier captured. But you promised. We didn't dare take you or Father Brochard into our full confidence. You would never have agreed. That letter is his death warrant. I know. But unless Napoleon is convinced that the purple mask is dead, we haven't a chance. Let it be on our conscience, not on yours. See that the letter is delivered, Comtesse. unknown friend in the royalist camp. In either event, Rocher, this is your chance to redeem yourself. I swear to you, Consul. I want no promises, only action. You will leave at once forever with Captain Laverne. I hold you personally responsible for the safety of Governor Orsanelli. With my life. And should the Purple Mask try to abduct him, you I will do well to capture him before Brisquet gets here and prove the money I paid for your release was not wasted. I want every foot of that wall guarded and see that there are sufficient men at the rear gate. Yes, sir. You will remain on duty, Captain. No one enters or leaves without my permission. Yes, sir. Take four of your men and guard the east gate. Take your men and see that the west gate is guarded. That's that, Governor Orsanelli. <laughs> The chateau is completely surrounded. Cavalry guards every road to Ebrer. Good. My compliments. How many men have you detailed? One company of dragoons, one of hussars, and 30 gendarmes. 30? Where did you find such a number of gendarmes? Details from the surrounding districts, Danville, Vernon, Beaumont. Too many men may frighten off the purple mask. Nonetheless, I intend to take no chances. You're very concerned about me. Thank you, monsieur. It is not only that, but uh, Napoleon has called in the famous Risquet. But I intend to capture the Purple Mask before he does. I've heard of this Risquet. Do you know him? Only by reputation. They say he used to be quite an expert at tracking down royalists. I am not without talent myself, Governor, or I should not be Minister of Police. <laughs> I hardly think the Purple Mask will affect an entrance here tonight. Unless he's inside already. Uh, inside, but how? In disguise? Impossible. The entire house has been searched from cellar to attic. And every servant examined. Randy, monsieur. Put it there.
about him. He wasn't among the servants when we arrived. One moment. Madame Anais. Yes, monsieur? You know the man who just brought that brandy? Of course. That was Francois. Where was he when we arrived? He's the night man, monsieur. He's just come on duty. Well, keep him out of here. He's a creeper, and I don't like creepers. Bad enough to have everyone going to... What was that? That was Francois, monsieur, falling down the cellar stairs every night, right after the brandy. <laughs> that will be all. Yes, monsieur. nearly midnight. I wonder if the letter was a hoax. It's possible. Something wrong, Captain? This is the housekeeper's niece, sir. She wishes a pass to leave the grounds. Why? I do not live here in the chateau. The soldiers refuse to let me go home. Did you check her story? Yes, monsieur. Very well, give her the pass. We'd better control our nerves and not give way to absurd fancies. Oh, pardon, sir. What is it now? I ordered a pass for her, sir. You should be the one that's wearing it. I mean you no harm, mademoiselle. Believe me. It seems to me, Governor, that if he intends to make an appearance, it had better be... How many times must I tell you not to come in here without... Colonel Mask is here. Where is he, man? Where? Come here, girl, quickly. Tell the governor. He stopped me, sir, on my way home. How do you know it was he? He wore the mask and uh, he gave me this note to deliver. He offered me money to deliver it. I refused, so he, he kissed me. Again. Audacious rascal. <laughs> Listen to this. Monsieur Osnelli, kindly have ready 10,000 golden louis. I shall call for them at midnight. Otherwise, I shall regretfully be compelled to kidnap you. Sign the purple mask. The childish bit of braggadocio. Alert the guards. At once, monsieur. You, mademoiselle, best remain here. There may be shooting. get out of this ridiculous position. Come in. 
They've captured him. You see, Rocher, we shall have our little surprise for Napoleon. I have never met this Brisquet, but I should like to see his face when he learns I have beaten him to the purple mask. So we meet again under slightly different conditions, Monsieur. Yes. And this interested gentleman must be none other than Monsieur Sinelli. Delighted. I assume you are the men who captured him? Yes, Monsieur. You will not be forgotten in my report. 10,000 gold louis. <laughs> I promised myself, Monsieur, of the purple mask that if ever I got my hands on you, I... Pardon me. Mademoiselle? Yes, Monsieur. Come here. Is the man who gave you the letter? It's absurd. I identify this man as my abductor. You saw him without his mask? Well, no, but I... Is this the man? I, I am not sure. Now, don't be frightened. Tell him exactly what happened. Oh, never, monsieur. Come now, I want only your identification. The man wore a mask. You said he kissed you. I, I only saw part of his face. Um, with your permission, gentlemen. Would you excuse me? Monsieur, you failed to live up to your boasting. On the contrary, it still lacks a few minutes to midnight. But you are our prisoner. Only until you become mine. <laughs> I like your impudence. Now be fair, Governor. I said midnight, which gives you precisely three minutes in which to carry out your ridiculous threat. It's an amusing situation, don't you think? Amazing. Take him away and lock him up. Before I've given you the message. What message? From. You don't mind their knowing? Don't listen to him. You disappoint me, monsieur. Take him away. Wait. What kind of message? Of some importance, I'm sure, to your government. Be careful of him. I warn oh, you. Oh, be he... quiet. I'm only talking to the man. What's the message? It is for your ears alone. I refuse to leave you alone with this man, Governor. I'd like to find out what little trick he has up his sleeve. Nevertheless, do as I say. May I? Satisfied? If the good captain is worried, your gendarmes can remain. We shall let him have his little joke, Captain, since it will be his last one. The doors will be locked. Rocher, you're the most suspicious man I've ever met. I suppose you know you're tickling me. Captain, you will be outside this door, I will be outside that one. Well? Have you got it ready? What? The 10,000 gold louis. Is that all you have to say? I felt you might like to avoid the discomforts of being abducted. A tiresome journey, bad food, imprisonment. Look at the time. I seem to remember you had promised to do something on the stroke of 12. But it's already been done, monsieur. One sound, and you are a dead man. Permit me. The Baron de Vivan. The light. The Vicomte de Mossin. The um, gendarmes from Beaumont met with a slight delay. A few friends consented to take their place. You know, I've only to raise my voice. To be shot and stuck. A most difficult combination to survive. You've still got to get out of here. Yes, I know. And to take you with me. The situation has interesting possibilities. The gun, monsieur. Thank you. You're a remarkable fellow. But this time you've outwitted yourself. <laughs> we shall soon see, monsieur. Oh, it was much too heavy with the gunpowder in it.
At ease, Captain. The governor is honoring me by taking me to jail himself. Yes, there's, there's been enough bungling. You and Roche wait for me in the library. We'll fill out the report to Napoleon. Yes, Governor, as you wish. You do not seem quite as undaunted as you were a few moments ago, Monsieur. A man cannot feel too confident with a gun behind his ribs, Captain. Keep an eye on our guest. I'll only be a moment. Good morning, Contest. Good morning. He's in the shop. So in spite of all his boasting, he never left Paris. I'd better tell the Baron. Perhaps Madame will like this one. Oh, no, that's far too old. Monsieur! A young lady should have a young bonnet. Now, let me see. No, ah! Try this on, Madame. I saw Josephine wearing one exactly like it. Really? Permit me. Worn at an angle, so. Hola. Oh, it should cause quite a stir. Especially worn by you, madame. How sweet. Huh? Mademoiselle, I should take it. Pardon me. Yes? May I see you for a moment? Certainly. Would you excuse me, mademoiselle? Wasn't he just darling and so handsome? Oh, yes. Irene, take care of this for madame. Ah, good morning, Dal. Monsieur, when one accepts a commission as important as the one we gave you, one either succeeds or dies. So I assumed. And naturally, I prefer to succeed. You kidnapped Orsinelli? That's right, Orsinelli, a tall, hairy fellow. He wasn't guarded? Good heavens, my dear man. Ah, mademoiselle. He had Napoleon's entire army with him. It was all I could do to get into the place. And yet you got him out? I promise, mademoiselle. My congratulations, monsieur. The Purple Mask himself could not have done better. I only hope for other opportunities to serve you. Rest assured, we shall call upon you very soon. What have you done with the prisoner? <laughs> well, that was a problem. I dragged him from farm to farm like a trussed up calf. But I couldn't find the one you mentioned, so I brought him here. You did what? Well, what else could I do? I had to take him someplace. Where is he now? Outside in my carriage. If he escapes, we're done for. Oh, but he's quite secure. Good strong rope and that sort of thing. You must get him away from here at once. My dear Marquis, I just can't cart him around France indefinitely. Get him out of Paris. Hide him. Bring him back after dark. As you wish. But he's such a dull conversationalist. Especially with a gag in his mouth. Monsieur. Be careful, I beg you. You're worried about me. You are in more danger than you realize. And not alone from our enemies. I don't understand. If they give you another mission, you mustn't take it. Why not? Don't ask me. Just do as I say. I'm not accustomed to such concern. Thank you. Please go away now and forget all about us. You're afraid they'll send me into another trap. You knew. They intend to sacrifice me so that the real Purple Mask would be free to help your father. Yes. And you are willing to continue? I too wish to see your father free. And I must go on. But you won't go on. You'll die. You've made me very happy bringing me this warning. I would show the same concern for any man who's being betrayed. There's more than just concern in your eyes. You are completely mad. Yes, completely, Lorraine. From the 
first moment I saw you. But you never saw me before two days ago. I've seen you a hundred times from a distance. I've watched and admired you. Who are you, monsieur? Really? A man who loves you dearly. I could not tell you this before when there was so much to do. You sound as though our work is nearly finished. Our work in France. But the real work has just begun. When your father is free, we shall all go to England. It will be easier to fight them from there. Oh, your words give me hope. And your eyes give me hope. I see the same look that was in them when we first spoke of the purple mask. Monsieur is mistaken. Governor Orsonelli. Isn't that better? I had to promise my soul to the devil to get that thing out of my mouth. Since we're in the woods where we won't be disturbed, I thought you might enjoy the scenery. I'd enjoy it more if you didn't have that pistol in your hand. Ah, but then I wouldn't enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time you've ever carried out an abduction with your face uncovered, isn't it? Yes, the first. Wasn't that a little imprudent? I had no choice. I was your prisoner. It's an easy face to remember when I leave. If you leave. I'm not the only one who saw you. The Minister of Police, Captain Laverne, the servants, and any number of soldiers and gendarmes. Practically an army. It was almost as if I was expected. You were? I wonder how you found out about my plans. I received the information from Monsieur Brisquet himself. Ah. Napoleon has called him in to track you down. The great Brisquet. I am really in trouble. He knew the hour, the very minute that you'd arrive. Do not escape him for long. He must be quite a remarkable fellow. Yeah, he's not without his talents. I hope he has a talent for convincing Napoleon to pay your ransom. I'm sure you're quite anxious to be reunited with Madame Ossinelli. Naturally. Oh, how I envy you married men. You're not married? No, no. But as of today, I have great hopes. Would you care to see your picture? Delighted. Wonderful. Uh, no. Here we are. Very beautiful woman. Congratulations. Thank you. Mm. Uh, one of the loveliest faces I've ever seen. Who is she? Your wife. <laughs> I extracted this little trinket from your pocket. What kind of a game is this? Would you really like to know? I should very much like to know. You say the talented Brisquet knew of my plans. If I had been in his place, I would have said to myself, Brisquet, my friend, here's an opportunity of a lifetime. With the information that you have, you could capture the purple mask by yourself and not have to share the glory with the minister of police or even with Napoleon. So I would have substituted myself for the real Orsinelli without telling anyone. Uh, do you follow me, Monsieur Brisquet? Yes. I'm afraid the first consul is going to be very angry with you, Monsieur Brisquet.
Where were we? Letter arrived less than half an hour ago. Another ransom demand from the Purple Mask. That fool, that meddler. So, Briskay wasn't satisfied with my plan to capture the Purple Mask. He decided to try one of his own. I had no idea he was not Orsonelli. Nor I. Fortunately for you, Captain, you have a fine war record. Otherwise, I'd strip you of your rank. I sent patrols out everywhere, sir. He will be found, I promise you. And you, Roche, your bungling cost me 10,000 gold louis. Now, Briskay will cost me even more. Is there nobody in France who can rid me of this accursed Purple Mask? The money you paid to secure my release was not entirely wasted, Consul. I believe I can find the headquarters of the Royalists. What do you mean? After I was abducted, the Purple Mask turned me over to another man who, who led me to a shop that catered to ladies. I understood you were blindfolded. There are other ways of seeing than with the eyes, Consul. As I entered, there was a strong odor of perfumes and ladies' cosmetics. A small anteroom, then three steps down to a marble floor. At the fourth step, I felt draperies hanging to my right, a, a fine, rich brocade. I pretended to grope my way. Behind the draperies, I felt a rounded pillar. In front of the pillar, the head of a mannequin with coiffure. Ten paces later, I was led down a narrow stairway and then placed in a cell. I know the very shop, and I think I know how the Purple Mask managed to learn our plans. And Monsieur Rocher, this establishment is honored. A very interesting shop you have here, Majolan. Thank you. Quite unlike any other shop in Paris. We have a very exclusive clientele. Even Josephine favors us with her patronage. Mm. And the wives of many high officials, I have no doubt. Yes, indeed. Very interesting. Is anything wrong? We shall soon find out. Charles, I thought you were still in Everest. My business there terminated sooner than I expected. Isn't that the Minister of Police? Yes. Oh, I'm so glad he's been released by that horrible purple mask. I was certain you'd be pleased. But unfortunately, that horrible purple mask has abducted another official from my custody. Oh, not Governor Orsonelli. How dreadful. Your concern is most touching, madam. Captain Levin. I was correct. Bring them in. I'm afraid your little game is ended. Game? I don't understand, Charles. Don't you? Your attention, please. This establishment is closed in the name of the Republic. All persons connected with it are under arrest. Captain, there's an entrance to the cellar. Find it if you have to tear down every wall. You two, follow me. Something is wrong. Turn here and keep your wits about you. parcel here for Maison Magellan. We'll take it. Uh, someone's supposed to sign for it. If you want any signatures from this place, you'll have to get them in prison. And you better hurry. Otherwise, Madame Guillotine will have to do the signing. Merci. They have included Lorette's father. That means they're moving him from Rouen today. And well guarded. 
Tell me, Marcel, how many men can you depend upon in your fencing classes? Fifty, maybe sixty. Hardly would I call a powerful army. Call them together at once. Gentlemen, for years, each one of you has been under the impression that he alone harbored a dangerous secret. A secret that in reality, every man in this room shares. Yes, every one of you is of noble blood. Every man in this room lost his father and mother on the guillotine during the revolution. You are all sworn to secrecy even against each other because the slightest hint of your true identity would have meant your death. But the time for secrecy is ended. Tomorrow a group of royalists who have been carrying on our fight go to that same guillotine. We few are their only hope. Well, uh, tell us what to do. Lead us, monsieur. It is not I who shall lead you, but a man equally well known to you, René de Crevière. <laughs> Is this some sort of joke, Monsieur Cardinal? You ask us to trust our lives to this man? We will follow you anywhere. But not this fashion plate. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you intend to lead it? With your gold-headed walking stick or your lace handkerchief? <laughs> Gentlemen, explanations will take too long, Marcel. Let us see not whether I am qualified to lead, but whether you are qualified to follow. <laughs> Since you insist, I'll do the others. Oh, no, I... Permit me! As champion of this class, I claim the privilege. <laughs> Perchance you'll all have an opportunity, monsieur. Permit me. The purple mask. The purple mask. Please. Please. He has something to show you. This is a map of Paris, showing the underground sewers. You will notice over here they pass directly beneath the military barracks. Now this is our plan. Heavy 
a guard, it must be the Duke. And we have only a handful. Napoleon will have hundreds of trained soldiers. He would call them off if the Purple Mask was his prisoner. You're not planning to give yourself up. I'm going to make Brisquet an offer. His freedom and my surrender in exchange for the others. Have you lost your senses? Brisquet is not to be trusted. I'm counting on that. Meanwhile, you carry out your part and we'll hope for the best. I'll meet you with the guillotine. Monsieur Bonaparte, I have a guest. Well, Brisquet, the last I heard, you'd managed to have yourself abducted. Well, you see... Would not have happened if you hadn't tried to take things into your own hands. Permit me. The Count de Trevier, otherwise known as the Purple Mask. The Purple Mask? At your service, Consul. So, you're the notorious conspirator against the Republic. Let us say instead a servant of His Majesty the King. There is no King in France. Nor will there ever be again. Unless, of course, his name chances to be Bonaparte. I knew I picked the right man, Brisquet. How did you manage his capture? A simple matter, Consul. Capture? Forgive me, but there's been no capture. Brisquet and I have a gentleman's agreement. Napoleon gets Brisquet back and the Purple Mask in exchange for your condemned prisoners. You dared make such a promise without my authority? A promise is sometimes merely a matter of expediency. Do I understand, monsieur, that you do not intend to keep your Pledge of Honor? There can be no Pledge of Honor between a citizen of the Republic and a Royalist. Surely the great Bonaparte will not permit this. If ever I give my word, I will keep it. But I have given no pledge. Put this man in the guardhouse until further orders. And inform those concerned there'll be one more guest for the guillotine tomorrow. Without a trial? You've had your trial. to get started. a very long time, my child. Yes, Father, a lifetime. Why did you become involved in all this? You should have gone to England, where you would have been safe. With you in prison and so much to do, my place was here, in France, continuing your work. You should have stopped her. We tried your grace many times, but she would not listen. Would you have expected any less of me if I had been your son? At least I thank the Almighty. Yes, let me hold her in my arms once more. We are under the barracks.
You valued your life. Edouard. Hoping, then keep hoping. With the purple mask also a prisoner, the entire royalist movement is doomed. But he is not the purple mask. He's the substitute. A substitute? It was part of a plan that failed. But it is you who are mistaken, my friend. René is the purple mask. But that's impossible. The Comte de Trivier is the son of one of my oldest friends. On the day his father died on the guillotine, he has been fighting for France. I couldn't very well permit you to send an innocent man to his death in my place. When Marcel told me of your plan, I decided to be my own substitute. And later I found I was also my own rival. If you are the real Purple Mask, our last chance is gone. No, Lorraine. Come with me now. dies, it should put an end to the royalist movement forever. By virtue of the power vested in me as Minister of Police, and by order of Napoleon Bonaparte, First Consul of France, the following named traitors to the Republic. René, Comte de Trevière, the Duc de Latour, Laurette de Latour, Baron de Morlaix, Marquis de Clamorgan, Countess de Grisel, Irène de Bonault, Constance de Vouloir, Marie de Pont Blanc, Yvonne de Tracy. Wait! This is not the detail from Rouen. Now! Drop your gun! René! What does this mean? It means, monsieur, we have no intention of dying as yet. The first man that makes a move dies. That blundering Rocher. And you, Brisquet, you told me that with the purple mask, our prisoner, extra guards would not be necessary. If you have hopes of getting out of here alive. Very imprudent, Captain. 
In the name of the Republic, I order you to put down your arms. No, Marcel. We need the Minister of Police. Too bad your courage is not equal by your swordsmanship, monsieur. I ask a pledge of honor from the First Consul of France. The life of the Minister of Police for the freedom of the prisoners. Well, Prisquet, you were going to take care of the Purple Mask without any help from me. What brilliant plan do you have now? You may run him through, but not one of you will leave here alive. He's not a very good friend of yours, is he? I wonder, monsieur, whether you would show such courage if it were your throat at the tip of my blade. I'll give you the opportunity to find out. <laughs> Edward, take charge. See that the Minister of Police has a good seat. The Captain, too. Marcel, our friend's a safe place. This blade is deadly as the guillotine. First Council, perhaps we can bargain. Brisquet and the Minister of Police and a chance to prevent useless bloodshed in exchange for the prisoners. It would be good riddance to these troublesome royalists. Not as permanent as a guillotine, but... I give my pledge. of safe escort to England for you and all your royalist friends. And I trust I've seen the last of the Purple Mask. If I had given my pledge never to return to France, I would keep it. But I've given no pledge. <laughs> <laughs> 